Good morning, I'm Amanda Mason. Thanks for tuning in for Big Two First News at 11. This morning, Odessa High School students are going back to school without one of their classmates. Odessa High School students released balloons and wore yellow in honor of their fallen classmate, Layla Hernandez, a 15-year-old sophomore who was shot and killed in this weekend's mass shooting. And over the next two and a half hours, we will take you to the scene of one of the most devastating days in the history of Odessa. We're trying to give you as much information as we have. Again, I want to recap if anyone's just tuning in, MCH just had a press conference around 745. The number has raised to six dead, still 21 injured. We're seeing two treated and released, seven in critical condition, two serious, one deceased, which was the number that bumped up to six, and then one transferred under the age of two. And we are just praying for the families and friends and everyone who was in that situation. They do have counselors on standby, but we're going to go right now to Felice at Synergy Odessa. We have our reporter Felice Romero out there with some more details. Felice, what can you tell us? Hello, Amanda. Now, as you can see, we are at Synergy a little bit further out. And now breaking news just in. That number has risen to eight people now dead. Mm -hmm. We have the details of three in Midland and five in Odessa. This includes the shooter and the victim who was pronounced deceased this morning at Midland Memorial. And we're actually now just hearing new reports that the MPD officer, Zach Owens, has been released from the hospital, so that is good news there. We're continuing to follow more from Chuck Pryor, who's still currently at Midland Memorial. That's where four other patients are being treated. And we are actually going to, at 1130 this morning, Senator Ted Cruz will be speaking at the University of Texas Permian Basin, and he will be speaking about the shooting this past weekend. And we have right here live Big Two's Jake Eichstead, who's there awaiting our senator. Jake, what can you tell us about the event going on? Hi, Amanda. Good morning. Yes, I'm here at UTB in the Presidential Archives building. The hospital was on lockdown. It is open right now, but the lockdown was for patient and staff security. Right. Again, making sure they were prepared for that situation. And it seems like they were honing in on just trying to save as many people as quickly as possible and try to seclude that area to make sure that they are getting all the resources to those patients in need. We also heard from a doctor at MCH, and he is a veteran and has been in, in multiple situations where there were mass casualties. So he said that they were prepared for this because that's what they do. Operation process is what he called it. Again, it came in three different phases when they have an active shooter situation. The first one, activation. Then they have the operational period, one and two. And now currently they're in recovery phase. Now, if you have any questions, you know, there is a location that you can go to for families and loved ones of those victims. Again, it's 1010-1010 East 8th in Ector County at the Tax Assessor and Vehicle Registration. Uh, we're going to be pulling up a map at some point on that, but what the biggest question that I'm sure a lot of you have at home that was addressed at the press conference was, what can we do at home? What can people out there do to help? The good news is the su blood supplies are good. They did have a cash emergency supplies is what they called it, that they were able to have quickly for situations like this. And this morning, the FBI calling this type of mass shooting extremely rare, and that's because it was mobile. And right now we have more than 15 crime scenes that are being investigated. It is rare when you look back over the history of active shooters. You don't see many that go mobile. And right now you are looking at exclusive video from our helicopter of where the scene ended Saturday afternoon. This should show you some true perspective to how this incident ended. And you can see a very active investigation with evidence markers and stunning images of those gunshots gone through the windshield of that mail carrier van. That mail carrier van carjacked by Ader before continuing on his death rampage. And right now, continuing our coverage, here's a timeline of Saturday's shooting. The shooting started at 313 Saturday afternoon with a traffic stop at Interstate 20 and Loop 250. The shooter was being stopped by DPS troopers for failing to signal a left turn. And that's when he opened fire at one of the two troopers on scene. He injured one of those troopers, and then the chaotic scene continued into Odessa down a business patch stretch along Highway 191, as you can see right here on your screen. 
And then the shooter went towards JBS Parkway and 42nd Street. This is video inside the Whataburger. Law enforcement pulling their guns out of the back of a unit. You can see right from the window. Just across the street at Twin Peaks is the scene of another one of those crimes. There were at least 15 crime scenes in all. Keeping our focus on Saturday's shooting, there were dozens, if not hundreds, who were just innocent bystanders who saw the whole thing happen. And right now you are going to hear from a woman, Natasha Rivas, who does talk about the terror she went through just watching. Here's her full interview. Okay, so we do want to get started with the latest on the weekend's mass shooting in Midland, Odessa. Let's get to what we know right now. Authorities Sunday afternoon releasing the name of the accused shooter. He is 36-year-old Seth Aaron Ader. He has been accused of killing a total of seven people and injuring more than 20 others on a shooting rampage. And digging deeper for you this morning, we are learning more about a possible motive. Reports indicate Ader had been fired just hours before going on that rampage before a seemingly normal traffic stop. Sunday afternoon, law enforcement, including the FBI, was seen raising his Ector County home. Law enforcement on the scene for several hours at his rural home and Big Two News uncovering his criminal arrest record. All of you at home have questions as well. This is a stable condition from what our law enforcement is saying that it was one shooter, it was not two. Um, and we'll go ahead and recap real quick what happened. At 317, there was a traffic stop in Odessa. That's where a trooper was shot uh, and that that suspect who is described as a white man in his mid-30s. They're still not IDing who that person is, and we're seeing some more happening right here. We just heard from U.S. Senator John Cornyn, also Odessa Mayor David Turner was there. And just a quick recap of what U.S. Senator John Cornyn said. He came with information to try to address three different issues, background check systems, work with schools to create more of a hard target instead of them being a soft target, and also to address the mental health issues that we're facing here in the United States. We will continue to have more information on yourbasin.com. Again, that was a press conference where a check was presented to help the victims of this weekend's mass shooting. Check out yourbasin.com or download the Your Basin app for more information as we continue to get it into the newsroom. Well, we started off with breaking news this morning. We are hearing reports of a mass shooting at a high school in Southern California. And according to the Associated Press, there are at least six hurt at Saugus High School in Santa Clarita, which is about 30 miles from downtown Los Angeles. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department says that the shooting suspect is a male in black clothing and was last seen at the location. And breaking news just into the studio, we are following an explosion in Midland County. We're going to take a view from our Citibank Sky Tracker that shows that explosion. One person is in critical condition following this explosion. Officials with the Midland County Sheriff's Office say the explosion occurred in the area of FM 307 and Fairgrounds Road. As we mentioned, one person has been transported in critical condition. Now, MCSO officials also say a nearby business has been evacuated. We have our teams headed to the scene to be sure to stay up to date. You can follow us online at yourbasin.com and we will continue to update you as more information becomes available. So there are reports of a shooting at a Walmart in Duncan, Oklahoma. So far, the details are limited, but Oklahoma Highway Patrol confirms at least three dead. You had the two ladders from above and then you had also your crew from below, as you said, really focusing on the exterior and now they're actually inside the building. Can you talk about the containment and what the situation is currently right now? Yep. Odessa police want to warn the public that car thieves have been driving around during the early morning hours and targeting people who are warming up their vehicles. The Midland Police Department needs your help with an attempted kidnapping. Well, today the first adult flu death of the season was reported. Some security experts exposed how Amazon's Alexa and Google's home assistants were vulnerable to hackers. Well, the holiday travel season can be stressful, especially if you're flying, but a 13-pound cat named Stitches is helping put some travelers at ease. The 11 year old Tabaco, a mixture of Tabby and Calico, is a new therapy cat at the Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport. While her handler carts her around in a stroller that has a sign that says, Pet me. But this should put a smile on your face. A World War II veteran is asking people to help him celebrate his birthday. 
Jim South turns 100 on October 7th, and his birthday wish is to receive 100 cards. His senior living home posted this picture of South with a sign asking for the cards, and South joined the Army actually in 1940 and was deployed to Normandy seven days after D-Day. He already has plans for his birthday cards, and he says he's going to hang them in his room. Again, the parade starts at 10 o'clock, so make sure you come out, grab your chairs. Yum. Barbecue. That smells so good. <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> well, welcome back. We have our favorite chef here, Chef Stephen Gonzalez with AGB Cooking Connection. Well, it's time now to send it over to our meteorologist, Derek Sibley, for a check on our forecast. Derek, it was ra raining cows and steers today. It was Ooh. pretty intense. Yeah. Say it one Better more time. than cats and dogs. <laughs> cows and steers. Oh. And we are done. Oh. Let me get you a band aid. Oh, great. Do I get a lollipop too? <laughs> um, the lollipop will come later. Okay, great. The sun will come out on Monday. Make That's sure that you've got the extra stuffing. For the turkey. You want leftovers so you can eat them all day long. Primate biscuits. <laughs> I don't know. It's all Killed good. it. It's okay. Well, this cold front can't hold back anymore. The storm must rage on, and the cold never bothered me anyways, but let's send it over to our meteorologist, Derek Sibley, to see if he can let it go. <laughs> Bread or butter? Boop, boop. One or the other. Burr. It's cold in here. <laughs> there must be some cold front in the atmosphere. Hey, yeah, so. I like that beat. I was trying to find cool. a different way of saying winter is coming. And in the spirit of Halloween, yeah. it is a laffy taffy <laughs> joke time. Okay. <laughs> what will a chatty caterpillar become? Uh, a butter? A That's social butterfly. Oh. oh, I like that. Hey, That's a like good that one. Yeah. Huge, That's right? It's a very important app. It's something you could give to all of your family members that as well. That is true. This Hijack is... someone's phone, download right. the app on there, and say you're welcome as and you hand it back. You can also wrap their phone up and then put it under the Christmas tree, and if they can't find it, they'll be so surprised when they see it. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll be like, what's different? Love, what do you see there? And I love the this, uh, yeah, this, yeah. Uh, this prank. It's Pranksgiving is what yeah, it's going to be. You're a big prankster, so <laughs> I, I yeah, feel yeah, like yeah. this would be something you'd do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking a page out of that handbook yeah, right now, actually. Right now, yeah. right now. Well, thanks for those updates. Definitely thanks. stay safe out there.